All right, just a couple of announcements before we get started. Uh, we're going to start with an opening statement from the head coach, and then questions can be asked of the student athletes. We'll then dismiss the student athletes and give questions to Coach Underwood. If you would like to ask a question, please raise your hand and someone will bring you a microphone. Prior to asking your question, please give your name as well as your affiliation. Uh, no video of any kind is allowed during the press conference. Everything will be available later for download at the NCAA Digital Media Hub. With that, opening statement from Coach Underwood. Survive in advance. Um, that's pretty much the, uh, the theme of that game. A um, lot of credit to Lamont and his team. Uh, they didn't win 27 games for a reason. Uh, they're very good. Um, I thought the uh, no doubt who threw the first punch uh, or the first three punches uh, was them. They just knocked us right in the mouth uh, the first six minutes of the game and, uh, you know, took it to us, kicked our butt. They were much more ready to play than we were uh, in terms of an energy standpoint uh, and an execution standpoint. Um, once we got through that, we settled in, uh, turned that, I think, 12-point deficit into uh, at least a working margin. But, um, uh, you know, Fonz got hot in the second half. Their defense doesn't give up a lot of threes. We, we found a, a, a few looks. Uh, our offense was anemic. Uh, we were rushed. Uh, we didn't execute anything uh, in the first half. Uh, when we did, uh, we got good looks, uh, but, uh, you know, it was a night that uh, three for 17 from the three. Uh, I hope those don't, uh, don't, don't come along very often. That's not us. But, um, again, give them a lot of credit. Uh, Coleman made a huge defensive play at the end of the game. Um, and uh, the thing that I like the most is this group stayed connected and stayed together. Uh, even when things were, were not going our way. So uh, we live to play another day, and uh, we'll have to, uh, uh, you know, enjoy this one, learn from it, and, and we've definitely got to start games better than we, we started tonight, and we've got to have a different attitude when, when, when the tip jumps or we'll be in trouble. Questions for the student athletes? Please raise your hand. Come on down here. Kobe, Jeremy Warner, 24-7 Sports. What do you think led to the slow start, and what do you think allowed you guys to have a chance in the final minute? Um, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure what um, led to the slow start. Um, I think we had great energy, um, great connectivity um, bef um, in practice before. Um, we had great energy before the game. I mean, I so I'm not really sure what led to that, but I think what um, allowed us to pick, the, pick it up was like coach uh, connectivity. Um, we were really together. Um, we kept, um, you know, elevating each guy, each, each, each each other, um, you know, I'm um, picking each other up. Like whenever Coleman would make a bad play, I would make a bad play. We would pick each other up. So I think that's the main reason why we got it going. You know, in the, in the end, you know, we trust each other, and you know, we just basically put like use that trust to, you know, build chemistry and and play harder. Uh, Anderson Kimball, Takeda Herald Review. Alfonso, um, in the second half, it looked like he really turned it on, kind of lifted up this team offensively. What kind of happened? What was kind of different for you coming out of the break? I mean, I feel the same. I just play with confidence, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm always, like, working out, you know what I'm saying, on, on my shots. So I feel like every time I shoot, it's like, I feel like it's going to go in. So I just play with confidence, and I was just ready for my moment, and he, he came. Uh, Coleman, Alec Buzzi, Orange and Blue News, Rivals.com. That block at the end, your season's been kind of a whirlwind with everything you've had happen in terms of not playing much. Is that one of the biggest plays of your career, playing basketball ever? Uh, probably not. Um, I can't really think of probably the best play I've ever had in my career, but um, uh, I, th I think it was just, you know, being locked in, really. Uh, I think that was, you know, in my opinion, just like a, another play for me. Um, you know, M Monte got screened. We called a switch. Uh, I had a guard on me. He tried to float it up, and, you know, I blocked the shot when bothered him with my length, and I think I've been kind of doing that all season, so it's kind of just another play for me. Alfonso, Joey Wagner, Illini Inquirer. You, you had talked about being ready for the moment of your first tournament game. What were the emotions in that, and did it kind of live up to what you had thought in your mind going into it? 
I mean, I feel like, I mean, you know, like I was working out with Tia, you know, like a lot of days before the tournament. So I feel like I was ready for the moment, but I feel like the energy was kind of bad in the beginning. That's like you can see. But, uh, you know, in the next game, he's got to pick it up. Uh, in the beginning, I feel it's going to be well, a way better result. Matt Stevens, AlignaGuys.com. This one's for Kofi. Their coach said that they were going to use 15 fouls of their bigs on you. You drew 11 fouls according to the box score. How frustrating was it for, for you to be able to get post touches knowing that they were going to be as physical with you as possible? Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't frustrating. You know, I, I've been going through that all year, um, probably all my, my whole career. Um, you know, um, I think it was just another challenge. You know, this is an NCAA tournament and things get tougher. You know, coach just reminded us that things get tougher each, each week, each game, you know. So, just got to, you know, be prepared for that, you know, stay mentally um, locked in. Um, don't allow myself to, you know, um, be a weakness um, to, to the team. Just keep my head up and just tr keep, keep trying to do whatever I can, can to win. Last question for student athletes. Mike Berman from NBC Chicago. Kofi, down here in front row. Front row, right here. <laughs> um, the last possession for the mocks, they got a couple of looks. What? What are you feeling? Take me through the emotion of that final possession, knowing what's on the line, and then when when the horn goes off and you and you know you guys do advance. Just a lot of fire, you know. I'm I'm remembering last year I'm losing Loyola and just remembering how that felt. I mean, you know, it's like the same to myself. We can't let that happen again. Can't let that happen again. You know, I'm just, just a, like I said, it's a lot of fire, a lot of emotions. You know, um, I was all over the place in that one. I was like, you know, we got we got a lock in. I was eager, to, you know, to go get a rebound or whatever whatever play it was to be made, you know, so just like, just really locked in and focused. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate <coughs> it. All right, questions for Coach Underwood, please raise your hand. Microphone will come around to you right here, right there, number one. Uh, Jim Matson, 25 Sports in uh, Peoria. Brad, kind of piggybacking off that last question, you walked off the court. Uh, well, what are your emotions when the buzzer goes off and you walk off the court and you did survive in advance? Yeah, it's relief. It's relief. Um, you know, I told Lamont they they played better than us, um, and we just happened to have more points than them at the end, and we led at the right time. Um, but it, it's also encouraging, and very encouraging to be very honest to know that that let's see, Trent Frazier's 0 for 6, Curbelo's 1 of 7, um, Demonte was 1 of 3. And uh, Plummer was 5 of 12. And to know that we're a really good shooting team, and you guys all sat there and watched us shoot yesterday, uh, you know we're a really good shooting team. And we had a bad day. Kofi's 50% from the free throw line, and we found a way to win. We held them to 20 second half points. And uh, so you're, you're, you're relieved, you're encouraged, and, and again, I've been in this thing enough to know it is literally just every game's going to be close, and you know there's very few blowouts, and it's survive in advance, and literally you, you take them any way you can get them. Coaches, you were struggling in the first half. I, th I think it was the first time all season that none of the freshmen got minutes. Was that because of the moment, or what, did you think about putting them in in, in that situation? Um, you know, I, I, I thought that you know, the timeouts were, you know, or five minutes or whatever they are. I mean, they're long. And, uh, you know, you, you stay pretty fresh. And, and <clears throat> once we got through the first six minutes of the game, I really liked what we were doing defensively. And um, I was worried about us ever getting a rebound. But I thought defensively we, we, were, we were excellent. And, again, you know, you, we were very worried about Baptiste. And, and uh, you know, he's two for 11. Um, you know, Malachi's four of 20. Uh, man, I'll take that every night. Our defense was good. And so, you know, it, it's not, not no knock against them. I think it was just kind of the way the, the, the game went. I mean, they may play a bunch in the next one. I'm Coach Doug Bouchon from Orange and Blue News. Um, <coughs> when you fell behind, you start putting on a little bit of pressure. Was that to try to speed him up a little bit? And do you think that it changed the game at all for you? Yeah. I mean, I, th I thought it just gets, got him out of sorts, got him uncomfortable, extended the floor a little bit. We, we almost had a turnover in the first half. We got one in the second half. It was just a little change of pace. It was just a, just a curveball. And, um, you know, it, it helped us. Uh, it got us going. Um, and, and I thought it provided a little spark in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in, in both halves. 
you sports from Decatur. Uh, coach, as far as the game goes, how do you help the players kind of wipe that from their memory, knowing that you do have a game in two days and they stay, need to stay mentally focused? Yeah, it's, it's, it's what we do. I mean, that's why you play the regular season. It's, you forget the next one. You can't let one loss turn into a second, and, and you can't get too high after, um, you know, after a win. Uh, again, we can, we can enjoy this moment, and, you know, we won an NCAA tournament game and, and uh, a game that we didn't play great. And yet, let's go figure it out tomorrow, and, and we'll figure out who we play here in a little bit and, and um, know that it's going to be a good team no matter what. Scott Ritchie, Champaign News Gazette. I mean, don't take your first lead until 47 seconds left in the game. You mentioned how connected the team stayed. What is it about this group that they maybe weathered 39-plus minutes before they could do that? It's the Big Ten. I mean, we play in the Big Ten. We play in so many two-possession games. And, you know, look at, look at Trent's night, and he has two big free throws. Uh, you know, Plummer just gives us a, gives us a lift. Um, you know, it was, it was, you know, Kofi's put back. Uh, you know, it's just little things. And, and we just kind of hung in there. And, and it's like I, I, I've tried to build this thing around the fact that when you have nights like this in the NCAA tournament and you don't shoot the ball well, and we shot 34%, when you don't shoot, how do you advance? Tonight we found a way to do that. And that's what this thing is, is truly all about, is being able to guard, being tough enough, being able to make a play and make a stop when you have to to win a game in the NCAA tournament. Last question for Coach right here. Brad, how does, how does this team now respond? Like, how do you get them reset uh, for a second round game? Um, how, how do you see them responding yeah. to this? I mean, we'll go. There's no doubt. We better go. I mean, we're, we're one of 32 still playing. And, um, you know, we'll, believe me, this team's, you know, it's, kids have really short memories. You know, and that's one of the great things about them. You know, in five minutes they're going to be on social media reading everything that you guys say about them, and so you know it'll be, um, you know it'll it, they'll they'll be fine, and we'll we'll prepare and put a game plan together and start watching film on after uh, tonight's game and 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 get them refocused pretty quickly. Thanks, coach. Thank you.
Just a couple reminders before we get started here with this press conference. Um, we're going to start with an opening statement from the head coach, and then uh, we're going to go to questions for the student athletes. Uh, once those are done, we'll excuse the student athletes, and then we'll go to uh, questions for the head coach. Uh, if you want to raise your hand, someone will be around with a microphone. Please give your name as well as your affiliation prior to asking a question. Uh, with that uh, opening statement from Coach Paris. Not sure where to start, but I guess it just with the game. Uh, you know, I don't know how many minutes we led during the game. It was more than it was less. I do know that. Um, and so we just were we were grinding and executing fairly well defensively. We had a couple bursts offensively that allowed us to get going and take or extend a lead. And then, but we, we just didn't, we didn't play well. We, we, well, I take that back. We talk about playing well and performing well. I think we played well. I do. I think we played well. We were where we were supposed to. We did what we were supposed to. We didn't perform great. Uh, we got a shot and didn't make it. We uh, didn't snag a rebound. So we didn't perform well, but I thought we did play well. And, um, we got a competitive team now. I said it before we started this, at face value, our team is pretty good. Uh, not compared to the SOCON or compared to any other league. At face value, if you want to watch a good team or play against a good team, we got a good team. And so I've believed it. Some guys don't get a chance to watch them very much, so maybe they don't know that. But uh, hopefully, hopefully people could see what this team collectively came together and, and got accomplished. So tough, tough way to go out, obviously. The last game is always going to be a hard one. But under those circumstances, I think it was, I think it was uh, uh, even tougher for our older guys and just for our group as a gather, tight-knit group. I've done this 26 years. This is my favorite group. Uh, it's, maybe it's not that close. But this is a great group. Anyway. All right, questions for the student athletes. Please raise your hands, please. Right here. I guess, Malachi, will you take me through those last seconds of the game? Um, coach called um, a play where a double high ball screen, and um, my mindset was I just got fouled last the last possession, so. I tried to do it again and, you know, just going too fast. And then luckily got the rebound and then got a shot that I feel like if you're going to get a shot for the win, like that's a shot you'll take. And um, it's frustrating because the shot I work on a lot and it didn't go in. And um, that's all I can say. Like I just let my, I just let my teammates down and I just um, missed the shot that I usually make. Silvio, obviously not the end you all want, but man, when you look back on your time here in Chattanooga, what are you going to think of? I'm going to think about my brothers. I'm going to think about the coaching stuff, the coaching stuff, and uh, I'm going to think think about uh, the the community, just the, you know everything that's involved in basketball, with the basketball, and the love they have showed to me. You know, uh, oh man, just. A few minutes ago, I was just looking back at you know, my past two or three years in, my, in college and uh, looking where I'm at now. I don't know if I have the words to, to say how, you know, how much, how thankful I am for the opportunity Chattanooga has given me. And uh, man, it just, it's just crazy, you know. Looking back, it, just, it felt like I, I didn't have a chance. Coach Paris, uh, he showed me love. My brother, my teammates, they show me love every single day. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm just thankful. I'm thankful. You gotta pre I'm thankful for everybody that were involved and that wanted to, to see my best, you know. And uh, I'm just forever thankful. That's all I can say about uh, Gene Henley, Chenica Towns Free Press. Um, Malachi, you're not a senior. So what's going through your mind right now as you're just kind of processing like the finality of this particular season? Um, even though I'm not a senior, it still hurts because, um, you know, every day is not promised and just these type of moments don't come all the time. And um, it like, it just, I, you know, this is what you dream to, you know, the games you dream to get to as a kid. And like I said, even though I'm not a senior, like I f feel just as bad because 
we gave everything we had out there and we came up short and that's the worst feeling because you can't get it back. Mal, looking at this season as a whole, and especially how you played in this game today, you as a team played in this game today, what kind of message does it send to college basketball? Um, there's good basketball everywhere. And, um, you know, there's obviously you see it all the time with mid-majors, but, um, you know, there's talent in a lot of places that you might not think there's talent. And um, just because, you know, the school might be bigger or the name or the culture, um, you know, you, you don't go into a game fearing anyone. And I think we came in not – not fearing them and you know we kind of attacked them first and um, we just wasn't able to sustain it for 40 minutes. Last question for the student athletes right here. Uh, Alec Pussy, Rivals.com. Malachi, you finished four of 20 from the field. You're one of the most efficient shooters in the country. Was there something that Illinois did with Frazier or Williams that made it difficult for you to get your shot to fall tonight? Um, you know, they're, you know, they're a very physical team and some shots I feel like I forced and then you know, obviously, you know, you get frustrated if you feel like there should be a foul caught or something. But um, the frustrating part is I feel like the shots that I shot that I usually make, I didn't. And um, that's why it's hurting me really bad right now because, um, you know, like you said, I am efficient. And today just wasn't that day. And it hurts because I can't get it back. And you don't want to have this type of game on this type of stage. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Got questions for you. Yeah. Okay. All right, we got questions for Coach Paris here. Please raise your hand. Down here in the front. <coughs> Again, Gene Henley, China Guitar Street Press. Um, Lamont, I've never seen you this emotional before. What's going through your mind? Mm, I don't know. Just this group is a different group. Uh, it, it's they're abnormally close and connected and abnormally uh, fun to be around and they let me coach them and so anyways just uh, I've done it a long time I, I've respect I respect that every team is different some in great ways some in not so great ways but this is an incredible incredible group to be around and honestly when I say that it has less to do with uh, what they do on the basketball court they're good they have a good team they play well. They play well together. They let me coach them. They let me come along. So anyway, yeah, that's what it boils down to is just the group that we have. We got a lot of older guys, some guys that took chances on me and us in this university. And so uh, I'm thankful. I'm not sure that that word really does justice to how I feel about it, but I guess it's as good as word as I have right now, so I am thankful to be around them every day, and it just was hard, so. Angela Moore, News 12. Coach, what a ride it's been. What do you think you'll take away the most from this season? Uh, yeah, just the interactions that guys had with each other. It's always, as you know, 20 years from now, it's, it's, it's what I'll think about. Um, it'll be more of that stuff and guys' personalities and uh, uh, just all the all those things that it has to do with just a team coming together and that's why we did what we did. I think we have good players. Um, certainly there are teams that have better players than we do here or there individually but collectively as a group you know, there's 358 teams I feel like a lot of guys would want to coach my team. So uh, that's what I think about, you know, look, at, I, it's very hard for me to even look at the future, honestly, and what that's going to look like. But I'm, uh, I'm really entrenched and focused on uh, these guys and what they've done and, and how they'll respond to this. Steven Zelina, guys, Lamont, what do you feel like led to what do you feel like led to 16 offensive rebounds against Illinois? And going into this one, did you feel like that was a, going to be a strength for you guys to be able to maybe go get it off the glass if you, if you had missed? Yeah, I, we did. It was on the board when we, we put a couple things up on the board before we go out in a game. And it's that are specific things that in this game we want to try to get accomplished. And that was one. That was one of them was to get to the offensive glass. 
attack it, be relentless as we do it, be physical and strong as we went, and then uh, try to generate some other opportunities. And so we did. We did a good job with that. Um, I just thought it was a good. I thought it was an advantage for us. I just did. I, I just watching them in, in a lot of games. It has been. I just in watching them though. I thought if we were committed to going on a consistent basis and laying a body on a guy and pursuing the ball relentlessly, I thought it was an area that we could we could have some success. In your eyes, what was the difference maker in this game that flipped the switch? Um, they made some shots. We, we didn't rebound the ball well. I mean, there were, there were a few things. We turned the ball over too much. Typically, we don't do that. Um, uh, uh, but we gave them some offensive rebounds, too, in, in seemingly critical situations that allowed Plummer to, to get going. Uh, maybe his first three was definitely one of the two threes was off of a, an offensive rebound. And so that kind of got him going. He went bang, bang on a couple. But we fought back. Uh, but it was. There were some very untimely offensive rebounds, including late in the game. We, we don't get it. We end up fouling them. We send Frazier to the line for, for two free throws he makes. So uh, the rebounding was on that end of it. We weren't great when we needed to. Um, but also we, we, we turned it over. We turned it over too many times. We're normally fairly efficient. Malachi leads that. Um, he struggled today. We had a couple other guys that struggled today as far as our efficiency, but we did enough that we still could have been in position to win the game uh, had we just whatever our percentage was, I haven't even looked, in those 18 possessions that we turned it over, let's say we cut that down into half. So on those nine possessions, let's say we were shooting 10% on those, right? Well, that's in a game like this, obviously that makes a difference. Last question for Coach right here. Greg Lawner, ESPN Chattanooga Coach. Despite the untimely offensive rebounds that you were just discussing, talk a little bit about the big men. I know you've talked a lot about it this season, how that group has been really strong for you and the depth is depth that normally a team in your position doesn't usually have. And all three of them had to play and play big minutes tonight. Just talk a little bit about what they brought to the table and how they battled Kofi in this one. Yeah, he's a big, strong guy. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to minimize any other impacts he has or qualities as a human being. But as a basketball player, I do know this. He's really big and strong. And so it took a lot of people to get in there and, and guard him different ways. Sometimes we used quickness. Other times we literally laid on him. Uh, and it was a stalemate that way. And we were fighting for dear life. But yeah, guys had to use fouls. Josh Ianni, uh, uh on his fourth foul, that was a calculated decision that he made to foul there. We were not in the bonus. He had got caught in a bad spot, so he fouled. So it was very smart of him to do that. We talk about that oftentimes. So, um, but yeah, all those guys. Avery Diggs is a, is the longest guy we have probably overall. So it's a different look uh, when you have him go in there. Casey Hankton, even our fourth uh, big five man, uh, did a good job of being active. He's a little quicker, and so it was just trying to throw a lot of different looks at him, trying to make him earn stuff that he got. He got a couple easy ones, but it, but I think for the most part, he earned a lot of the stuff that he got, and he's a, he's a good player. You know, We held him below his average, I, I think, or whatever that was. Uh, we did enough, right? We definitely did enough that if we have a reasonable day offensively, not to go in another direction with it, but that's what I always hope for when I get a team that I think is really good and, and is going to defend at a high level, I just pray for a reasonable day offensively. Doesn't have to be the best, that's for sure. But let's just not have two guys have one of the worst days they've ever had. That's all I ever want. And if you do that, typically you're going to be right in the mix to get some stuff done. And we've done that all season. And that's why we're here. We did it again today. We just happened to have a day where a couple guys uh, didn't perform great offensively. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.